I am really surprised to see how far they went and buffed the two triangle unit. Considering what they did in the past, I thought the buff would be like some minor changes or something. But they really just went all out for Federica and uh, Roland. Federica is a fire scholar, and for the EN version, they give us some buff to make Federica stronger than she was in the JP version. Blazing Chain is now another multi-hit option if you don't want to spam her 3-hit AoE because that one costs a lot more SP. But if you don't really care about the SP cost, then what you do is that you bring her 3 hit AoE, you spam that and then you and then when the enemies break, you use her nuke, which got buffed for the EN version. The potency for her eruption nuke went from 230 power with the chance of going to 1.2 if the enemy was combusting to 260 in the EN and then go up to 1.5 if the enemy is combusting. Which is a really big buff because in JP, it will go up to 400 at max boost and 1.2, which is 480. But in the EN version, it go to 450. And 450 and a 1.5 multiplier will go up to 675 potency, which is an almost 200 potency increase when you use the skill at max boost and the enemy is also combusting. Other than that, she also has a skill which is based off of an item, I think. It costs 1 SP and it has limited use for battle. So I think that is probably based off an item or something from a triangle. Our debuff is 20% fire resistance down and also magic defense down, which is a bit different from how a normal scholar works because a normal scholar would have 3 hit that debuff the elemental resistance down per hit. This one has limited use for battle and it doesn't have any attack attached to it but at least um, it also debuff magic defense down. The first passive got changed so that it includes a new effect to it which is that her combusting status effect inflicted by Federica will now get one extra turn of duration which is very good because you can now just keep combusting the enemy forever instead of just keep spamming your skill. Her second passive got changed so that the passive now applied to everyone in the front row if the enemy is combusting compared to just when it's in JP, it's just for herself. The main class that uses magic damage is Scholar and most other Scholar already have an innate 30% damage up so the 15% damage up part from Federica passive won't affect anything for them. Which means that if you would run Federica in a non-fighting comp you would run her for her 2 shield crack, her 20% active magic defense down, and her passive 15% magic up. I'm not really sure if it's worth a slot running her, because um, Eliza is an option you can run on magic team. She doesn't have to do anything and she provides passive 20% magic up, but with Federica, you have to consistently apply combustion on the enemy for her passive to work, so... I don't really know until we see an action, I guess. Her ultimate is just a big nuke that hit really hard compared to the other ultimate nuke, but because it has a downside to it, only use it when you think you can finish the battle with it. Federica can put out a lot of fire damage and is very consistently applying the combustion status effect, but she do have a problem though is that it's very easy for her to hit the damage cap. But there is a way to mitigate this though, and I might be wrong on this, but I think that starting with Restore of All Chapter 4, they that's when they introduced Moon Soul, and that's when you can put Moon Soul which can help raise the damage cap of your weapon. So Federica would benefit from it a lot. Currently, Ian, Federica is the best fire DPS in the game, and also thanks to her buff, she is also good at helping out the other elemental team. Not the best option, but it is a viable one. Federica in JP is a bit different. Even Cyrus over there is stronger than her because he has a TV buff to him while Federica doesn't have her new buff yet. Other than that, a purified team comp also isn't as 
uh, viable, I think. Because we have characters like Santos, Signa, Edelgard, Odeo O, who can also hit the fire weakness. So it's better to just, just build a team around them because they have a higher potency when hitting fire weakness rather than going for a pure fire team. I shall now compare Ian Federica and Ian Mulu. The only thing Mulu would have that would be better than Federica is that Mulu has a 3 hit that can debuff 15% fire with resistance down per hit. Other than that, everything else Federica does better. Uh, her nuke, her multi hit, her AoE, her stat, her passive, everything else Federica does, she does it better than Mulu. The good thing though is that you can run both of these characters on the same team. With Mulu, you can have her go first with her passive, and then break the enemy, and then set up Federica to deal big damage with her eruption. And then you can also put Cyrus along with the fire team because he also deals good damage. So uh, in conclusion, if Federica would be by herself, I uh, would still say it's okay to skip her. But the fact that she is sharing a banner with the newly overly powerfully buff Roland, I think it's worth it to pull for her. You want a very strong fire DPS and also a very strong speed DPS who is currently on par with with Leon in JP right now, then pull on this banner. But if you are lacking on rubies and you want to save for character in the future, then that's fine too. I still do think character like Winyu and Bachelor would be having more value than the two newly buffed triangle character. But um, you do want a very strong DPS though who is on par with some of the other memory traveler, then pull on this banner.